two different tools that, that really in the modern day need to be used together in conjunction with the uh, precious metals verifier by Sigma Metalytics. How's it going, Asher? I am well, and yourself? Oh, not too bad. I'm thinking about um, selling some scrap gold, and I know you do a lot of that, so I'm hoping you walk me through uh, how you're going to figure out the pile of stuff I brought you is real and, and what you're going to pay me for it and all that. Absolutely. I would be glad to go over the process for organizing and analyzing and evaluating jewelry to, number one, determine if it is gold, platinum, palladium, or silver. Number two, what carrot it is, okay? So what I'm gonna use for an example is we have this bag of jewelry that we've already gotten ready. So I'm just gonna toss, take it back, toss everything out on the counter. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look for visual indicators that identify what the items are. So that's just simply a carrot stamp. So every piece I'm gonna look at visually and see if I can see a carrot stamp. And then we're gonna organize it by carrot first. So this ring is stamped, uh, it's got a hallmark copyright symbol 14 CJI. So that should be 14 karat, that'll be our 14 karat section. Here's a watch case. Uh, this has a carat stamp of 14K GF gold fill reinforced. So we'll use this as an example of the two different ways to test gold to see which one is more effective on gold fill also. So we'll set that aside as gold fill little pendant, 120th 10K GF, that'll be gold fill. Now we have a ring, and this has got a small stamp inside. It looks like it's white gold or silver, but it says palladium. This is probably palladium, missing the P. So we're gonna test wow, these. palladium is like really expensive, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we get some palladium jewelry though. Uh, it looks like white gold or silver. Of course, it's not tarnished like silver would tarnish. Right. So a lot of times palladium, platinum, and white gold and white gold are uh, confused for each other. We have a couple pieces that were easy to identify, and then we have some other ones that we're not as sure about. So the first thing we're gonna do is I wanna show you uh, one of the most important tools that we use, and this is an XRF X-ray machine. It's gonna test the outside of the metal and help us verify carrot. So I'm just gonna put the first ring, which is stamp 14K into the XRF. We're gonna look at the camera on the XRF so you can see that we're taking on the picture of it, we're taking a nice strong sample. Just gonna hit play. Very good, just gonna hit go. So that XRF uses x-rays. Correct, so it's taking an x-ray on the surface of the item right now, it's gonna do 10 different tests. And you can tell you that initially it's coming back as 14 karat. Right. So it comes back as 14 karat with the breakdown 58.18% gold, 28% copper. Now here's the ring that's stamped palladium. Let's see how that works. Okay. Just going to adjust so you can see. There we go. That'll give us a nice spot to take a sample of. So basically whatever is in that picture Correct. Is what's being sampled? What's ever in the red circle. Now, if we okay. want to pinpoint a little bit smaller, we can take a pinpoint sample. Okay. So oh, wow. Yep. So sometimes a piece may have multiple metals on there and we want to identify the different metals. Okay. okay. However, the smaller sample is not as accurate. Uh, so we'll try a pinpoint sample and then a larger sample with a larger circle. Okay. And compare the results. Okay. So this is supposed to be palladium. So yeah, I mean, it's testing out really good. We're getting the gold coating warning, and that's absolutely fine. We don't care about that because it's a high content palladium. It's testing is 91.14% palladium, okay? So we like that. Let's just see what this old pen comes back as. It was just brought in as a let's test it and see. Okay, so let's review this one. So the test on this one came back as 12 karat. And I don't like 12 karat at all. 12 karat is not a karat that's commonly used in, 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 in jewelry. Usually in America, we use 10, 14, 18 karat, okay, for, for gold jewelry. 12 karat is most commonly used in what's called gold fill, which is a higher quality gold plate, uh, much higher quality. So this is most likely gold fill because it's 12 karat. So we're gonna throw this one aside 
and do the stone test and use some acid, which is going to be more accurate. So yeah. we're going to pull that one out. And gold fill is a common issue that uh, people run into that causes problems when they're evaluating jewelry collections. Okay. What's gold fill and what's solid gold? And gold fill is, is costume jewelry, not okay. precious metals. Gotcha. It's not fine jewelry. So here's another piece. This is a watch case, okay, uh, that actually is carrot stamp, 14K gold filled reinforced. So we're going to use this one also as an example on the XRF. Compared extra operating to a stone test. Okay, so it's already telling you it's, yes. it's kind of big. Well, this one is absolutely clearly stamped gold fill, and this is where the XRF machines fail, okay? Because we can see that it's giving us a solid 14 karat reading. Oh, but, wow. But it's not 14 karat, it's 14 karat gold fill, okay? So wow. you can see it says gold fill in there. And is that because the XRF doesn't read very? Very deep. Correct. So now you can see that it says 14K GF. And the reason that fooled the machine is the machine only goes a couple of microns deep at best. So this is gold And what's a micron plate. like? Um, an inch? A micron <laughs> is a unit of measurement. <laughs> okay. So how big is a micron? Like, like it's is it it's, we'll it's have to ask our chief engineer mark driver about that gotcha it's very small though very very small very right? very okay. very very small okay right so it's just plating okay gotcha so the xrf machines are great tools where they don't read through heavy plating or gold fill and that's what the last couple pieces that we need to take a look at here okay. here's another example so this one says 120th 10k gf so that means it's gold fill anytime you see a fraction in front of a carrot let me repeat that. Anytime you see a fraction in front of a carrot stamp, one tenth, one twentieth, etc., it means that that piece is gold fill. It's one tenth, ten carat, or one tenth, fourteen carat. So this one, okay, which is clearly stamped gold fill, is worn down enough where it's not fooling the machine, and you can see that we're getting a reading that says gold coating possible, okay? So this is a lower quality or more worn down gold fill. Gotcha. So the XRF, within the best of its capabilities, will will identify it when it can. Correct. But it's just something that can get fooled every once in a while. Yes. Nothing is infallible, just like XRF machines. The most expensive ones in the world only go slightly deeper. Okay. They, they're a great machine to give you an analysis on the correct way. So let me give you another example of what an XRF is used for. So if we wanted to figure out a complete analysis of the metal, we would just melt it up uh, with the torch and take a pin sample. Uh, and the pin sample would give us a, uh, the full analysis of what the total assay is, just not what's on the outside. So the process is that you melt all the pieces down and take a small sample of the melted and mixed up alloy and that will give you a more accurate answer. However, for what we're doing right now, we're getting great answers uh, that make sense with experience and skill. So I'm gonna do a couple stone tests on these pieces. That and are, what's a stone test? Is that what you call the acid test? Yes, so we refer to it as a stone test. It sounds a little bit better than acid okay. test or okay. scratch test. Gotcha. Maybe a polishing test. So this is the other way, the more traditional way to test gold. This is called a polishing stone or a jeweler stone. A jeweler would use this to polish a ring or another piece of jewelry. We're gonna use it to just take a small sample, then we'll test the different samples with these different gold solutions. Okay, 14 karat, 18 karat, primarily what we're gonna use. Our sole purpose of this is to give you, give you an idea of how the XRF can be accurate many times, but we'll get fooled by gold fill. So we simply are just going to take a small sample, 10 seconds, 10 second rub uh, is long enough to get through gold, gold fill plating typically. If you just do a second or two, it's not, not uh, enough of a sample and it will give you a false reading. Now I'm going to use one more piece to give you an example of what a great result is for solid 14 karat. So we have our samples lined up in order here. We're just going to take a small drop of acid and put it on top. First, we're going to use our control sample, this ring. Put the drop of acid on top. The sample underneath needs to look like it is not affected at all. The acid is basically acting like water on top. We can still see the sample. So this ring passes the 14 karat test. Let's see what happens. It passes the 14 karat test because the acid does not dissolve the sample. If the sample, if the line disappeared, it would fail the test. Look what, look what happens. 
on the second piece. This that's gold fill. Okay. As soon as you put the acid on, the line instantly flashes green and disappeared. That's fake. That's not real gold. So let's take that right out of there. That's no good. Now let's try it on this other piece. Okay. Now remember, this piece was pretty strong. This piece right here, the XRF rendered as good gold. So we don't like that. It failed. Okay, now let's try this one. This one again, the 14 karat gold fill case. Red is 14 karat gold and the XRF. So let's see what the acid does. So the acid is slightly melting it away. Now, this is really, really heavy gold fill. It's, the acid should look like water on top. It should not affect it at all. So it's, it's affecting it a little bit, but not enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a harder sample to give you guys another idea. The goal here is to rub through the gold fill layer. Now, with that harder sample on here, we rub through all the plating, you can see that we're getting a really weird result where it's half melting. This is a failure. It needs to be completely unaffected like our ring there. So this is a fail, this is a fail. And we know that also because it's clearly stamped gold. Now, let's take this 14 karat ring, this ring here, which passes the 14 karat test. We're gonna try it for a higher content, a higher purity gold, 18 karat, which is 75% gold, versus 14, which is 58% gold. We're just gonna put the acid on there, and it's gonna pretty quickly dissolve away the sample. I'm gonna do it again. You can see, as soon as the acid hits, it takes about three seconds, then the gold dissolves. So, the acid dissolved the sample, for 18 karat acid, held on 14 karat. That just verifies that this piece is 14 karat, which verified what the XRF machine said. Now, one of the reasons why we want to use the XRF to be more accurate in buying and selling is that it will give us the actual carat instead of like this piece, which came back at 17 karat, which you would think would be 18. So I'm going to show you how the acid would take in small sample. I'm going to put the 18 karat acid in there and see what happens. Visually, this looks pretty good for 18 karat. The sample is still there. It hasn't melted, but it's starting to slowly melt. So with the acid that's test... That's interesting. It's like some, some burn coming off of it, some yeah, smoke there. Yeah, that's very observant. Okay, so what's smoking off is the carotid metal in there. That's the copper that's carotid in there. So depending wow. on the gold alloy, like 14 karat, 58% gold, this will have a lot of copper and a little bit of silver in there to change the color a little bit. And what we see smoking off is the base metals okay. that are in there. That's why it kind of stinks in here a little bit, huh? It's like it's that, that acid is burning it and that's that smell. I didn't want to say anything. I thought Correct. maybe it was a dog. The dog uh, did not fart. <laughs> the sulfur smell is, is purely from, it does, I mean, it, 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 it stinks. So I'm just going to clear this out. It's sort of neat. We're just going to take a, a towel. It's just going to dissolve all off. And, and so the happens. acid test... The acid test was is kind of the old way. I remember when I used to go sell coins or something, everyone would, would do, or I'm sorry, it's not the acid, the, yeah, the, the, the stone the, test is the old. The stone the test, the acid test, same same thing, gotcha. yes. I mean, it's been done like this for, forever with different strengths of acid. It's 100% mm -hmm. accurate, it's still needed, okay? XRF machines, XRF machines have been around for a while. They are quite expensive. They're coming down in price point. This is. They're two different tools that, that really in the modern day need to be used together in conjunction with the uh, precious metals verifier by Sigma Metal Labs. Everything works hand in hand. We cannot rely solely on one tool anymore to uh, do this job correctly. Basically what happens is people will just bring in a, a large collection of jewelry. Maybe if they've inherited, you know, grandma's jewelry box, what we suggest is just bring everything in, all the costume jewelry, everything. Yeah. And we'll sit down with you. Myself and all of my employees are GIA uh, trained jewelry professionals. That's the Gemological Institute of America. So bring in all the jewelry. Even if you're not sure if it's good or not, we'll sit down with you. We'll analyze everything with the correct tools, with the XRF X-ray machine. And we'll look at all the diamonds, use diamond testers and stone testers to correctly identify, uh, identify all the gemstones, price everything out. Uh, so what happens if people want to sell it, we'll just itemize it out and make them an offer on each individual piece so they can see how everything is priced. And then uh, whatever you want to do is fine. There's, there's no pressure. Um, if, you want, if you want to sell it that day, that's great. That's not a problem. If you want to think about it, you can come back in a day or in a year. We can still be friends. It's not a problem.
Right. So uh, basically, just to reiterate, uh, bring in all the jewelry, the entire jewelry box, everything. Even if you're not sure if it's good or if you think it's junk, just bring it in. Let me take a look at it. We'll go everything, through everything accurately and professionally, make you a fair purchase offer. If you want to sell it, great. If you want to think about it, not a problem at all. And do you ever do this like... Um online or via mail or anything or is it more uh, we, an in-person thing what basically the mailing process was pretty slick actually so people just fill out a form on our website at both forms send us some pictures if they like we can give them a ballpark price all you got to do is box it all up send us an email with the weight and the dimensions of the box will send you a prepaid fully insured uh, fedex shipping label you fedex it to us we'll get it we'll go through everything call you with the purchase offer we're Whatever you want to do after that is fine. If nice. you want to sell it, we'll mail you checks and your PayPal, Venmo, yeah. uh, or wire transfer. If you just want to think about it, it's not a problem. We'll send everything we'll back. We'll send it back, right? Yeah. Okay. No charge. Nice. And you do everything chain of custody, so it's always videotaped from the minute it comes in the door to the minute it goes out the door? It's videotaped from the second the FedEx truck drives up in the parking lot, full chain of custody. So it's all, all under camera at all times. Gotcha. Well, thanks, Asher. Hey, I really appreciate it. Another great time with you and Max. Um, thanks a lot. Yeah, and we'll talk soon. For sure.